You're listening to a message from the Winsboro Church of Christ. This is the Winsboro.Church podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can get in touch with us at any time through our website at Winsboro.Church. I thank you for reading that passage this morning. Now you're going to have to bear with me. I'm a little old school. I didn't have a podium to hide behind this morning, so I had to make an adaption. Uh... If you've been paying attention the last couple of weeks, KT is bringing our Sunday morning lessons until uh, Kobe gets here, and he has a theme that he's following, so I'm going to be following that theme this morning. Two weeks ago, he talked about the churches and the building, and then last week it was Church of Christ, and uh, I really appreciated his display of how that things don't go the way they should with the rope down the aisle and all of those that participated. And I don't know if y'all could hear the questions he was asking the individuals he asked to get up and grab the rope, but it was little snippets of things that have been used throughout our lives that we've witnessed to divide us, to separate us. And so... I just, as we look at the, if you look at the handout, there's three questions that, that you need to answer today. And if we're going to be unified in Christ, there is unity of Christ. And, uh, you know, as we're, as we're transitioning through this change, um, we had elders and preachers meetings Thursday night. Colby came down for that meeting. Drove down, drove back. Uh, it was great to be meet with him at our meeting Thursday night and for him to be a part of us already. They are looking for a four-bedroom house with at least two bathrooms that would accommodate their family. Um, they've been shopping online, hadn't found a lot in Winsboro, but if you happen to know of a property that would fit a family of his size, just keep that in mind. But as we look at being unified in Christ, the unity of Christ this morning, three questions. In your own words, define unity. What does that mean to you? How important is it? What role does Jesus play in the unity within the church? What role does Jesus play in that unity? And then last, how will you contribute to the unity of the church this year. So that's where it really gets kind of touchy for us, that we have to have that. As we look at being unified in Christ, over the last decade it kind of became uh, a trend, especially in the business world, to have, or any group is coming together would have what you called a mission statement. You need, to, you need to define who you are and what your mission is and so that you're all, you can pull the team together. It's a, it was an effort to bring unity within that group. I would almost bet that all of you that have been in any kind of role in, with a group in, in employment, you've, you've probably got a mission statement at work, Eric, don't you? Yes, you do. Okay. This morning, if, if we picked a couple of, just a couple of verses that identified Jesus' mission statement for the church. I'm going to go to Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. And this is where Jesus was... There, there was a debate about the resurrection and they were arguing and this one scribe spoke up and asked Jesus. He said, one of the scribes came and heard them arguing and recognizing that he had answered them well, asked him, what commandment is the foremost of all? And Jesus answered, the foremost is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay? One. Not many. One. 
And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbors yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. So Jesus identifies the two things that are most important for His church. And the last part of His mission statement is in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you all the way, always to the very end of the age. Okay, so if you look at that as quote-unquote a mission statement from Jesus for His church, He knew the humanity of people and knew what would move in. That there would be things that would cause divisions. There would be things that would divide us and make us not be unified. So we ask you to focus on two things. Love Him with all that you do, and love each other. And then go tell everybody else who He was. So it's pretty simple. It was extremely, extremely important to Jesus to get that message across to His apostles. His disciples that were following Him, those He was going to send out. And that takes us to John 17. You see, that reading was part of a prayer that Jesus made on our behalf. He prayed that for you and me. He prayed that for each one of us. I'm going to go back to that passage again, and I'm going to, I'm going to read it again. And I'm, I'm using... The New American Standard Version, so my wording may be different to what you're reading or what. He says, I manifest and now glorify thou me together with thyself, Father, with the glory which I have with a world before the world was. I manifested thy name to the men whom thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them to me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have come to know that everything... They have come to know that everything thou hast given me is from thee. For the words which thou gavest me I have given to, me, to them, and they received them. And I truly and truly understood that I came forth from thee, and they believed that thou didst send me. I ask on their behalf, I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those whom thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all things that are mine are thine, and all are mine, and have given glorified in them. I'm no more in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep them in thy name, the name which thou hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are. That's Jesus' words. To God the Father that we would be one with Him. Now, He's praying that specifically about His apostles. But as you look at the rest of that chapter, and if you'll look on down, and we'll continue the reading. In verse 12, While I was with them, I was keeping them in Thy name, in which Thou hast given me, and I guarded them. And not one of them perished, but the son of perdition, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to thee in these things, and I speak in the world, that they may have my joy made full in themselves. He's praying for us to have a joy that comes about by being unified together. <clears throat> I've given them thy word, and thy world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask thee to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth of thy word is truth. And as thou hast sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. As for their sakes, I sanctify myself, and they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask on behalf of these alone. This is where it gets to us. 
Listen to the words of Jesus. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that thou did send me. You see, Jesus understood what Satan would do by trying to divide us. He's done a pretty good job of it. I mean, if you drive down the streets of Winsboro in any direction and go out of town, you'll see many different buildings housing people who are Christians who claim to be believers and we're doing things different. But I'm not really talking about what's going on outside of this building. I want to talk about our family. Our family is about knowing what's going on within our lives. It's about helping each other. And I, there's, that is one of the greatest benefits that I have found in being part of this Winsboro family is that the love we have for each other to come to our, each other's rescue. We are not afraid to bear our soul to each other. We're not afraid to let each other know when there's needs in our lives because we know that we're going to be wrapped up in the arms of each other and we're going to be pulled together. Whenever Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, and we started a study in that book this week, this month, and we've looked at that first chapter, and Paul established who he was, and then immediately went to the problems that existed in that church. He said, there are reports of division among you. And there was a claim of being of Paul and of Peter and Apollos and they, they were all touting their glory of being who had taught them and who they were a part of. But Paul cleared it up and said, it's not really any of that that matters. What matters is that I came to you with one message, and that is Christ and Him crucified and salvation through Him. That's what the unity of the body really means. That's what it, what it comes down to. Paul was a, a man that understood the, that the unity of the body was important. He, he brought his apostles together. We even had, he had a few challenges, didn't he? From time to time with those. I think I remember reading about this mother that had two sons that were extremely proud of. They were doing great things. And she went to Jesus one day and she said, Hey, Jesus, will you let one of them sit on your right hand and one on your left when you get to heaven? These are my boys and I want them to be taken care of. Now how did that go over? So... He has experience with keeping us unified. And even though James and John were doing great things and we have documentation in the Scriptures of the works they did and the love that they had for Him, it's still that human nature of us having our own idea. So he, he pulled them together and made them to understand that the importance was staying true to the mission. I want to look at Ephesians chapter 4, if you will turn over there. This entire chapter was where Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus about them coming together, about what our roles and responsibilities are. And if you're, uh, if you're down to that last question about how will you contribute, that's where we're going to go there. So as you can... I'm going to back up to that second question about how is Jesus involved in unity in the church today? He's involved in unity not only 
was He praying for us before He was crucified, but He intercedes for us today. His Spirit comes in to live in each one of us. His Spirit is what guides our hearts and our thoughts as we seek to let the Spirit live within us. So we see that as Jesus is in a role of unity today, it continues with Him being at the right hand of God. I don't think He's quit praying that prayer for us to be a part and connected to each other and to remove all divisions. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. Each one of us have been called to follow Jesus. We've accepted that call. We follow Him. We are obedient to Him. We are proud to con- announce to the world, as Mike pointed out, as we proclaim His death, we proclaim that we are followers of Jesus. But he says to do that with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing forbearance to one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So our boasting is about the grace that's given to us because Jesus died for us. Therefore it says, when He ascended on high, He led captive a host of captives and He gave gifts to men. This expression, He ascended, what does it mean except that He also had descended into the lower parts of the earth? Who descended is himself also who ascended far above all the heavens, and that he might fulfill all things. He gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ. Everybody's got a job. Everybody has a job. So when you're you're looking at this question of how are you going to contribute to the unity of the body here, what's your job? What do you want to do that's going to contribute to the well-being of the family? It's just like the family unit at home. Everybody has a role to play to keep the family functioning. Everybody has something to do. If you don't know what your job is, you need to do a self-examination of what your commitment to the family is. How can you help this family? And there's lots of things you can do to help us to help the family in our service and in our growth, in our obedience, and as we seek to fulfill the mission that Jesus gave us. I'm going to go back to Corinthians where Paul wrote to them in chapter 12. And I want to look at a couple of passages there. Corinthians chapter 12, he talked about the use of gifts and how important it was. And it's very similar to what he wrote to the Ephesians. Beginning in verse 12, he said, Even as the body is one and yet many members, and all the members of the body... Though they are many and are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So, in that passage, Paul continues to emphasize the fact that we all have a job to do. But our jobs are intertwined. Our jobs are 
to build each other up. Our jobs are to pray for one another. Our jobs are to serve one another. And that's the things that we need to do as God's children. Paul addressed this church in Corinth in that chapter 12, and then we follow that with chapter 13. And in that chapter, Paul, remember how he started out this letter to them about there being divisions and problems among you and asking them to be one? And he gets down here and he's talking about all the different things they do within that church. Then he goes to chapter 13. As we look at chapter 13, and I'm gonna, I want to share this with you, because as we look at our church body and the growth that we have and reaching out into the community, this is what I want us to end on this morning, is this chapter 13 of what Paul instructed the Corinthians. Because this is what it really boils down to. It goes back... To that mission statement of Jesus. It says, if I, speak, <clears throat> if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and I know all mysteries and all knowledge <clears throat> and I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Now, this is how we demonstrate love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It does not brag. It is not arrogant. It does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It does not take into account a wrong suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Bear all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. And if there are tongues, they will cease. And if there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak as a child, and think as a child, and reason as a child. And when I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know fully just as I also have been fully known. But now abide faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So if we go back to the mission statement that I read at the beginning from Jesus, We have a responsibility to love God because we have faith in Him. But it's the love of each other that manifests our love for God. It's what we do for each other. It's how we treat each other. It's building each other up that draws us to Him. This is going to be a great year of growth for the Winsboro family. We've experienced more than 15 years of the love that Gerald and Loanne have brought to us, the teaching that he has done to us, the encouragement he's done to us. He's still a part of the family, and we're going to put you to work, so just don't, don't put your tools away yet, okay? Uh, we need you. We, we, need, we need you to find in this family, how you're going to bring unity. And I'm not singling you out, Gerald, because every member here has got to do the same thing. We have to come together to do our part about the growth that's going to happen this year. I'm excited to see Kyle in the growth that he is demonstrating and bringing message to us on Sunday morning. It's, it's became a real challenge to him to, to try to step in and fill up the pulpit, Gerald, that you left vacant. But he's got, 
He's got eight lessons prepared in what it's going to be of Christ. He's that far out. We sent him last week, week before last, to a youth minister's conference. And if you read his article, he came back, he said it was like drinking out of a fire hydrant. There was so much that encouraged him. I will tell you, he's a little bit afraid of what's coming. He doesn't really know Kobe yet. He doesn't know what it's going to be to work with him. He doesn't know... it, it, is, it has been hilarious the questions he has come to us with that we've had to remind him just do what you got to do today. Don't look too far down the road. You're influencing our young people. You've got a lot of activities. You've got things going on. So I want to ask you as members... Do you have the same anxiousness of the change that's coming that Kyle does? Or do you have this anxiety of what's coming? Are you asking yourself, what's it going to be? Are you looking too far ahead? Or are you looking within to answer that first question about what unity is? And then the final one, how will you contribute? We all have a great love for each other. And as we go through and transition through this year, there's things you can do. There's things you can reach out for. And I want you to be keenly aware. If you're going to do one thing out of this message this morning, I want, you to, I want to bring to light for you to start being aware of the people in your community, the people you know, the people you come in contact with, and maybe part of the family members here you don't know as well as you would like to, and I'm going to encourage you to raise your awareness, to raise your awareness to pay attention to each other as we seek to grow, and then as you have opportunity. And Mike Avery shared a story with me where an opportunity knocked this morning and he was able to share about Jesus. I want you to look for those opportunities where you can share with your friends and neighbors and co-workers and people you meet on the street that this is a family that you can come and be a part of. We're family. And we're family because we listen to the words of Jesus and we listen to the words of Paul about how that we're going to love God and love each other. This morning, if you would have any needs of prayer, if there's someone here who has not obeyed the gospel and to the point you haven't committed your life to Christ, you need to be baptized, we have a baptistry that's ready. There will be elders and their wives at the back. We'll be down here at the front. If you are subject to Jesus invitation in any way, we invite you to come as we sing.